had been hit. You know, I got shot through the leg, and they, those guys got, you know, they, they there was, you know, they didn't get fatally wounded, but they got wounded, and we were, we were able to get back, and then they eventually extracted us. We went back and prepared for the next mission to go right back out and do it again, and uh, and this, those examples are almost a daily occurrence. I mean, it, it, uh, whether you're in, whether we were, whether I was in a line company, being surrounded, being, uh, I mean, you ask that question, it's just almost like it was a, a, a daily thing. You know, you get up and go to work. I don't know what, you, you know, you get up, you go teach a class. Well, I got up and went out yeah, and <laughs> got shot at. So I guess that was rank, a, worry, you know, uh, something I didn't think about, but. Um, uh, this probably would have been, that story I told you might have, could possibly have been, have been a Medal of Honor. Don't know, don't care, but but they, I did get a Bronze Star with a V, and somebody wrote it up. I have no idea how this, none of these people were yeah. there, so I don't know who wrote this up, but there's a, a citation that uh, went along with that that explains very much in detail. If I find it, I'll, I'll be more than happy to give you a copy of it. Yeah. Here's my problem. Um, I had a binder, and in that binder, it had some, it, I kept some of my awards and stuff. Yeah. But anyway, I had uh, when we were on when I was on active du uh, active duty, I had a one of those green tote bags, like mm -hmm. a, a helmet bag for aviators. Mm -hmm. And in that, I had a second binder. I had two binders. One was with with a bunch of awards, mm -hmm. and I had another one with a bunch of awards. Well, I put that green bag in my back of my pickup, and we went to Sirloin Steakhouse in Rolla. Is that right? Is it? Mm -hmm. And I had it in the back of my truck, and I came out, and it was gone. It was nothing of no value, no money, nothing. And it, so I've lost some of that stuff. I just hope it wasn't that one I was telling you about. But it, it talks about in detail, of, of, you know, what I did. Yeah. Probably a lot better than I explained it. But so they was they were communicating with my mother. I didn't I didn't know, but um, so I was on the DMZ in this. Um, seven man team and we went out somehow it got back to her that the ent entire team had got lost not lost but yeah. you know killed I don't know how she got I think it was because they had sent like my third purple heart to her I guess they were sending this stuff to her I didn't know I mean she I didn't really talk to her much about it didn't really care remember what did I do when I got back drinking fighting and staying up on her <laughs> that's all I cared about yeah. I thought I was a badass then. Yeah. I went from being a, you know, I'm just a normal kid. Well, normal, I don't know what normal is. You know, I asked the psychiatrist one day, he says, well, did you have a normal childhood? I said, what the hell is normal? I don't know what normal is. I mean, yeah. <laughs> that yeah. means normal to yeah. you. Might not, be, oh, might not be normal to me, but, uh, so I had some radio stuff. And I got back, I said, where's my radio stuff? She said, well, I, could get, I started getting all these letters from the Army, she said. And I said, well, what's that got to do with it? She said, well, eh, I think you, I thought you were dead and I just got rid of it all. I didn't want to, I didn't want nothing, to, no memories of you, of, of that stuff and all that. And I was like, well. From my, from my experience, uh, well, it, in Vietnam, they were, they, they were actively trying to kill you. you know, and there's no way to get around it. I mean, you, you were trying to kill them, they were trying to kill you. There's no, there's no question about it, but. Um, cause it, so it wasn't war. I'm not sure I would, I, I would class that, classify the, um, the Iraqi war as a technology war, from my opinion, even though I was there and we saw a little bit of action, but you know, nothing, nothing as intense as, as Vietnam, um, war. I would say when I say techn technology, it was a technical war. Is it? You got the the. It was an aviator war. The, the um, artillery, aviators, stuff like that. It wasn't. It wasn't much of a an infantry war. Let me put it that way. Whereas Vietnam was definitely an infantry war. Um, in get infantry on the ground engaged in it. Uh, so, at what point did you say I am a career soldier? <laughs> That's a good. That's a good question, um, and I think it, that the answer to that question is, 
I got, my, my brain got changed. I, I, I don't know, how, God, I don't, unless, you, unless you're smart, or you'd have to be smarter than I am, which is not hard to do, but psychologically, I'd say something changed me. And I, I actually, after I did my second tour in Vietnam, I came back and I, I got out of, I got out of the army. I didn't want to, you know, I didn't want anything to do with it, but I got back and I went home to my, and I sat down on my mother's couch and all I wanted to do at that point was drink and fight. I mean, physically fight, not, not, you know, not, not like, not a war kind of fight, but I wanted to fight people and drink and stay out all night. And she says, you're not going to do that here. You need to go get a job. You need to clean up your act and all and so forth. So I was thinking to myself, you know what? In the army, they they feed you, they give you a place to sleep, and they even pay you. I mean, fifty four bucks was a lot of money then. <laughs> I was making fifty four dollars a month. You're probably thinking, oh, that, well, that wasn't much money. But wait a minute, I didn't have to pay for any food. I didn't pay for any medical. I didn't have to pay room and board. I had fifty. 54 bucks, I could, I could spend on, I could go crazy on 54 bucks. So I said, you know what, I think I'm going to go back in the Army. So I went back in the Army, I, I signed up for like three years, okay. which was funny because I was sitting on my mother's couch, and it was, and back then, if you, uh, and when, I, when I left Vietnam, I had no idea what rank I was, you know, pay grade or rank, whatever you want to call it. I said, um, when I checked out it, I said, hey, do I have any rank? Or I mean, you know, what I, do I put anything on my uniform? Do I have any rank or anything? Not that I really cared, but they said, oh, yeah, you're a sergeant, E-5. I said, oh, I don't have to pull KP. I said, I'll take it. Give me them stripes. So, uh, so I said, hey, this, this is good. And then they hand me a, this box of um, um, war, uh, medals and stuff. I'm like, who, who tracks all this stuff? I mean, I mean, you know, like to get an air, to get a, Air medal in combat, you got to have one combat hot LZ mission, or you got to have 25 hours of flight time in the air. So they hand me this, these air medals and Purple Hearts and all that. I was like, what do I, what do, I do with this stuff? And of course, you probably don't want to know, or probably you already know, you've heard this a million times, that how, you were how we were treated. You know, I got back to Fort Lewis, and they, everybody said, hey, you need to take that uniform off because. If you go to the airport with that uniform on, you're, gonna, you're not going to like it. And, of course, by that time I had a bad attitude, I mean, so to speak. You know, I wouldn't, um, I didn't understand all that. But, I mean, I didn't do anything to, to anybody here. But, you know, you know the story on that. Um, yeah. But anyway, after I decided to go back in, I, I decided, okay, I'll stay for three years. And then three years more, and then three years more, and then next thing you know, um, so I always I kept asking myself, um, you know, I made I achieved I did achieve to the rank of command sergeant major, and you know I says people say well how did you make sergeant major I said well it's simple just do what you're told to do be where you're supposed to be and be in the right uniform you're good to go you don't have to do anything else so so I you know I made the rank and uh, stayed thirty a little over thirty years and that's it.